testing your mouse that's supposed to be the perfect upgrade to my previous longtime favorite. I recently switched from the Logitech MX Master 3S to the Keychron M6, my all around pick for gaming and productivity at an actually affordable price of $50. It's lightweight, it has a high polling rate, and it does pretty much 90% of what the MX Master mice can do. It's got infinite scroll wheel, a thumb rest, horizontal side, scroll wheel, side buttons. But what if it was a mistake turning away from Logitech? After all, they've been in the mouse industry for decades now, with their first mouse launching in 1982. That's ancient. So with 43 years of experience, Logitech knows a thing or two about mice. They have some of the most popular gaming mice out there with their super light lineup, as well as the most purchased productivity mice, the MX Master lineup as well. And this year, they're launching their latest upgrade, the MX Master 4. This is it. And finally, it's out. Is the MX Master 4 going to make me come running back to Logitech? Or did they just make minor changes, hoping that people would buy their product again? And most importantly, is the mouse even worth it at a whopping $120? But before we can answer any of those questions, I need to get this thing set up. Because the MX Master 4 isn't just a mouse that you plug in and start using right away. I mean, it is, but it also isn't. You'll see what I mean. Inside the box, you get the mouse itself and a USB-C dongle. Ooh, a modern dongle. I haven't seen this on any other products I've used yet. And that's it. Logitech is really good about having all recyclable packaging. Once you have the mouse unboxed, you can chuck the remaining exoskeleton into the blue bin and move on. Speaking of exoskeleton, we have a Metapod sleeping on our gutters, which will become a beautiful butterfly in about two weeks. So let's plug this bad boy into my dock and it just connects instantly. This is one of Logitech's greatest advantages, their ability to seamlessly just work. There's no key toggles. There's no random miscellaneous voodoo rituals. You plug it in, you turn it on, and boom. Unfortunately, it doesn't connect via wired mode, which is something the 3S didn't do either, so I wasn't expecting this one to be any different. You can charge it while using it, but that doesn't exactly help us, does it? Logitech, come on. We know you can do it because you've done it with your gaming mice. Just do it with these. If you're not a dongle user, you can also use the Bluetooth option as well, but I tend to not do that since connectivity just isn't as stable. So dongle it is. And as an added bonus, because it's USB-C, you can use the mouse's charging port as a dongle holder. I doubt this was the intended purpose, but hey, it works. It's a bit tight to take out, so beware. So the MX Master 4 would be nothing without its full functionality, and you can't unlock that unless you download their software called Logi Options. In this case, I guess it's called Logi Options Plus. On their website, there's no option to exit the pop-up that tells you to download the latest latest version, the plus version. I mean, really Logitech? No X? No opt out? Looks like we're all being forced to use their latest version of their software. The one that comes with AI prompt builders. No! So I don't know about you, but I definitely don't want any AI features built into my mouse. Also, the mouse itself doesn't store the changes that you make to a lot of its features within itself because there's no onboard storage. Instead, you have to open up Logi Options Plus every time you want to use your own custom settings. Arr, darn it, this reminds me of Razer Synapse all over again. But you know what? It says the software will help me maximize my potential. Now that I do like the sound of. So let's try it out. You get options for gestures, mouse adjustments, and all of the other names for features that I may never use, but I will test them all. So you can make an informed decision on whether you want this thing or not, or dun dun dun, if I keep using it or not. Okay, I've installed all Logi Options Plus, and it's walked me through all the cool new features, as well as show me that my new mouse is at merely 55% battery level. Knowing Logitech though, that's going to last me another two months at least. If it's one thing that Logitech does really well with their mice, it's battery life. My previous three S's, I have several, have all lasted several months without needing a charge, and that's with full-time usage. In fact, I don't even count how long they last because it feels like you never have to charge it at all. So the program has a lot to walk you through, and by the end, I feel as if it's all gone in one ear and then out. I've remembered nothing about what it's taught me. I wish it had more examples and creative use cases instead of just assuming that I would remember, but I get it. They expect us to customize it to our own workflow and figure out how to solve our own problems with their mouse. 
It's a win, I guess. Before I ever started YouTube, I actually tried to teach myself programming. My brother was working this real nice paying tech job with flexible hours and some work from home days too, and I was stuck commuting to work, working in a small little dungeon room, and then commuting back home. So I dove into free computer science courses online, picked up some C, JavaScript, and some Python, and after six months, I felt like I was going nowhere. I didn't have any guidance, structure, or even assurance that I was going down the right path. Triple Ten is an online bootcamp platform that helps people change careers and get a job in the world of technology. And the best part, it's beginner friendly so you don't even need a tech background. They don't just teach you skills and then throw you out into the deep end. 82% of their grads land a job in tech within 6 months of completing the program. And if you don't get hired within 10 months of graduation, they'll refund 100% of your tuition. That's how confident they are that their program is going to work. And unlike other bootcamps, they've got your back even after they've taken your money. You can't say that about most companies. And it's not just coding. Triple Ten offers career paths in AI and machine learning, cybersecurity, UX UI design, business intelligence analytics, AI automation, and more. If you're feeling burnt out or stuck in a job that no longer challenges you, Triple Ten can help you pivot to a career that's flexible, nice paying, and future proof. Check out Triple Ten using the links below to start learning a new job from only $200 per month. So the software is great, but I doubt that's why many of you are considering upgrading to this mouse in the first place. You're looking for real tangible upgrades that warrants this steep price tag of $120. So first, let's look at the buttons. There's a lot of similarities here with the old 3S. It still has the infinite scroll wheel at the top in metal. It's pretty heavy, actually. The entire mouse feels heavier than the predecessor. And to confirm my suspicion, I knew I had to confirm it with real measurements. And surely enough, the new new MX Master 4 is a whopping 10 grams heavier than the 3S, which is actually shocking to me because it feels like it's a brick. And after going back and forth between both mice trying to figure out why this was, I finally figured it out. The material. Yes, the material of the mouse changed, which is actually a good thing, and you'll see why soon. The 3S used a rubberized material for the outside, which over time, you guessed it, got easily dirty and attracted stains like crazy. In fact, I have had problems with all of my white 3Ss. So is it me? Am I the problem? Tell me I'm not the problem. And after looking at other people's experiences too, they also got yellow mice, especially in the thumb area, just like me. The new MX Master 4 uses a smooth, plastic for most of its outer shell, but only time will tell if this will get dirty or not. It does seem a lot easier to clean if you just wipe it down every once in a while. It's very slippery. Now the thumb rest, which doubles as a button and a haptic feedback system, which we'll talk about soon, is made of silicone with grooves and bumps, and so is the far right side of the mouse as well. This will probably get dirty over time and accumulate nastiness inside the grooves, but silicone is pretty easy to clean. On the bottom side of the mouse, you see screws. Yep, finally. The 3S makes you remove the feet if you want to take apart the mouse, and it's hard to put back on if you don't do it right. But fear not, the 4 is repairable and upgradable. The shape of the new mouse is also slightly different, and it does affect the way you use it a lot. From looking at it initially, you wouldn't be able to tell, but the new mouse is much harder to pick up. So both the thumb side and the pinky side are much straighter. It has less of a waistline, a curve in, than than the previous model. You could say this new upgrade comes with a few couple extra millimeters on each side. So if you look from a direct front view, the 3S curves inwards, which allows you to just lift it up easily. So the new material along with the waistline makes the mouse feel like it's super heavy because it's harder to pick up. Now this isn't a problem if you tend to keep your mouse on your desk when you're using it, but many people are chronic mice lifters, which means you move it to a comfortable position before actually using it. So if you tend to have bigger hands then maybe it'll fit the four better, my fingers are not nearly long enough to properly use this mouse or I have to really squeeze. Speaking of shape, there's some other changes you'd want to know too since it's going to affect how you hold and wield your mouse daily. The horizontal scroll wheel has now moved upwards and outwards, making it easier to access and scroll. I don't use this on many apps, but if you do a lot of video editing, this might make a huge difference for you. They've also added a new button on the far left side, ahead of the forward and back buttons. By default, it's a gesture.
pressure button. That means if you hold it down and then move up, down, left, or right, it'll do something different for each gesture. This isn't anything new from the 3S, which also had this feature, but it used the thumb flap button instead. It's not a feature that I use at all, but this does unlock five extra functions on your mouse if you choose to accept it. The new button on the 4 is much harder to reach. So now you have to stretch your thumb or move your entire hand to press it, and you combine that with a slippery mouse, and you're just asking for discomfort. So while it does offer a lot of functionality, I don't see myself using it too often. But let me know, is this a feature you plan on using or you have been using and what for? Now, for one of the bigger changes that they've made to their latest mouse, haptic feedback. And let me tell you, this thing gets intense. There's four levels to pick from, subtle, low, medium, and high. High is like an intense recoil when you shoot a nice gun. Sorry, we're from Texas, y'all. Just kidding, I don't even do that. But we are from Texas though, yeehaw. I'm using subtle, even that is a little too intense. I would have preferred a slider where you could go even lower. This button, the button right here, the haptic button, activates something called the actions ring. It is exactly what it says it is, a ring of actions. You can customize this to be different for each application you're in, like DaVinci Resolve, Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere, etc. This is great for creatives who want to save time and find themselves moving their mouse all over the place to do the same actions over and over, like hue, saturation, brightness. You can also create smart actions, which is similar to a uh, if this and that or Zapier, there's a trigger and an action. I've created some for my address, phone number, or things I just happen to type out all the time. But I could tie that to my action ring as well. But you know, you could do that with any macro creation software or tool. Chances are you're already doing this with something like Auto Hotkey or Woodomation. Yeah, I know what kind of nerd you are. So while it's unique and different, it feels more like a gimmick to me. Plus the haptics drain extra battery. So software is pretty intense on this mouse. But what about the mouse itself? Did they upgrade the switches, the battery life, or anything else? Looking at the capabilities, the switches remain exactly the same. They're quiet, they have a short travel distance, and can go from 200 to 8,000 dpi. If you had a blind sound test between the 3S and the 4, you wouldn't be able to tell a difference. So no upgrade here. Next is battery life. Hopefully this got better because one of the best features of using an MX Master Mouse is never needing to charge it. The old 3S has 500 milliampere hours where the new one has 150 more. But the new mouse also has haptic engines that will drain the battery some more as well. Of course, you can turn this off entirely, which honestly I might do. Maybe you'll get more battery life. It says 70 days. Moving on to the biggest issue that other users had of the 3S, the big kahuna polling rate. They still kept it at 125 hertz. Seriously, Logitech? Even with a dongle, it's at 125 hertz. You had your chance. Why didn't you just up it to 1000? This is the most common polling rate on everything. Even the cheapest keyboards and the cheapest mice have a thousand hertz polling rate. Unfortunately, this one feature alone will make it a no for most people. And yes, I know that people intend on using the MX Master 4 for productivity. Me too. But that doesn't mean I don't want <laughs> the smoother mouse movement. There's those times where I just want I want my mouse to feel more responsive. I like more control of my mouse. I'm sure you do too. Comparatively, the Keychron M6 and M7 mice can go much higher and feel smoother when moving your mouse around. I mean, why pay $120 for a new upgraded mouse that didn't actually get upgraded? They've only redesigned the outside to make it slightly more uncomfortable. Sure, they removed the stickiness and the nastiness of the rubber, but they've added a bunch of software that most people might not even use. And after using this mouse for a whole week, I can honestly say that it gives me more pain than it's worth. The added weight compared to my light Keychron M6, plus how hard it is to lift, makes me strain a little bit harder. Which doesn't sound like much, but after several hours a day times several days a week of usage, it adds up. So is the MX Master 4 worth it at $120? If you already have the 3S, rest assured, because you're better off saving your money and spending it elsewhere. In fact, even if you don't have a 3S, buying a 3S still makes sense over the 4. Right now, many stores are offering the 3S at $80, which feels like an absolute steal compared to the new 4. You still get all of the benefits, infinite scroll wheel, horizontal scroll, and you get a lot of the software benefits too, but at a discount and no haptics. 
Sure, it'll get dirty a bit faster, but you can get the black version, which is much better at staying new for longer. And with Logi Options Plus, you can access features like the action ring with your 3S. Now, if your main priorities are the materials and the repairability aspect, then the 4 is a real upgrade over its predecessors. I, for one, will be putting the new 4 back into its box in favor of the Keychron M6. And if you want to know why, then watch this video right here.